Hey y'all, Farmer Dre back at it. Today is another one of those days here on the farm where we got so many things to do. But today I'm just going to take you guys along. Like this morning I got to start off by fixing the gator. We got to put the battery in there. And then I got to go work on the blackberries and there's a hundred things to do. But I'm just going to take you guys along so you guys stay tuned for today's video. Alright, so this is our gator here and we had to use a battery for something else. And I just... Uh, we need the gator today, so I'm going to put on this battery here real quick, and then uh, we will see how fast and if I have any problems. The battery shouldn't be too bad to put it on, so. So our clamps here for the battery broke off, and all we're using is some hose clamps. Seems to be working pretty good. There we go. Nice, tight, snug, holding the wire there. Now let's see if it's going to crank over. Got to wait for the, them glow plugs. Well, there you go. So before we head out in the black gray patch, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, gotta show them the irrigation here on the tomatoes. Gotta get them going real quick. And uh, I have a dosatron and a timer in both high tunnels, but the only thing I don't have is this adapter between the two. So I gotta take this off and put in number two, number one there. But we picked a total of 1,030 pounds of tomatoes yesterday in total. We picked about 200 pounds out of the second high tunnel here and the rest came out of number one and as you can see here these tomato plants are absolutely loaded loaded with green tomatoes in here i gotta come through and restake them but i will we'll see what happens there but anyways get the adapter here and uh start irrigating number one all right so just kind of connected we're still feeding the high potassium fertilizer and we feed it now every single time we uh, we irrigate so instead of putting a you know the three pounds all at once i'm putting you know every single time of water i broke it down for every single irrigation period so that the, the, the tomatoes could have the fertilizer constantly and the reason we're doing that is now that it's getting really warm out here we haven't put the shade cloth on top of the high tunnel here and i'm going to show you guys we came in here yesterday and picked but i want to go ahead and show you guys here find a tomato that has here we go so here's the tomatoes, you guys can see all that yellow in there on the shoulders there. So the yellowing, yellowing is caused here by what it is, it's potassium deficiency inside the tomato. But as you guys know, we've been feeding potassium every single week for, I mean, since, you know, since we transplanted them. And the reason this is happening now that the temperatures are increasing, you know, in here it's, you know, 90 to 100 degrees, you know, whenever, during the peak of the, of the day here. So um, that the, the potassium is not going, it's in the plants, it's readily available in the plants, but it's too warm and the cells inside the fruit is not taking it up. And one way to uh, help this out is, you know, we got the fan running back there and trying to cool it off a little bit. And another thing that help, really helps it out is if you feed them, you know, when every time you irrigate, you keep constantly feeding that potassium there. So it could be more available inside the plants at all times instead of just that once a week. So that's the only reason we're doing that. And something like this, you know, it's it we'll sell that as a second, but it also has a really big core inside the center there of the fruit. So that's uh, that's the only downside of, you know, whenever it gets super warm like this. But other than that, it's not too bad. Just keep that fertilizer going. And the Carolina Golds here are looking a little rough. I think we got some kind of blight issue or whatever it is. Kind of come through some fungicide and try to treat that. But anyways, I fed them that calcium nitrate, so the tomatoes are doing a whole lot better. We'll go ahead and turn on that irrigation here and just uh, keep it going, keep it fertilized, just keep, try to keep the plants as healthy as possible and uh, we'll be good to go. Alrighty, so now I am out here in the blackberries. Those are the blackberries are here. This is uh, the water house we're going to use. The well is just right. I don't even know where the well is. Oh, it's on the other side of this building here. So uh, we're all we're doing, all these pipes should go inside this uh, water house here. But since we don't have the setup and the, we got the trench dug, we, just got to, we have no time to put it on. All I did is went to Lowe's and found a few couplers here to connect it to the hose there, if you guys can see. So all this is a uh, adapter here. It's a, it's a male three quarter inch and a hose adapter there and put it on the ground there. And then it's pushing the water all the way down to the headline there on the blackberries. I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys that over there. Alrighty, so I'm out here at the first four rows here, <clears throat> and all I did is 
the pipe is coming up here. I probably should cut it low to the ground there, but we're just trying to get these water today and come through and 100% finish. I'm not gluing any of these couplers here, and there's not enough pressure to blow them off here, but as you can see here, the irrigation is running, and the emitters here are dripping the water. Oh, that just blew off because I touched it. Alrighty, so I probably should go through and uh, glue this black thing here to the... Just I'll just probably glue those two together so it won't pop off like that anymore. But uh, yeah, so our goal here today is just to go ahead and feed them probably each four rows here but for a couple of hours. Then I'll continue doing that all until tonight and just leave the irrigation running all night here. So we get plenty of moisture to the plants here. So we have a total of 44 row, uh, 22 rows. And I'm probably going to start gluing those couplers here and setting them up in here. And then we will... Uh, Continue irrigating. This should have been done a while back, but like always, we're all super busy doing the more more important stuff. And today, this is the most important stuff. So let's uh, see how it works. Alrighty, so now I'm under the shade here. It's uh, warming out there today. Now all I'm doing is I'm gluing these adapters on here or before I go on the field and put it on there. So I got to do 13 more here, and then I'll be done. Just using a PVA 3 one inch 90 there and the adapter there to the drip tube there. So it's uh, just trying to work ahead and make it easier for whenever I get out in the field in the heat. Just go, go, go. And I don't have to stay out there and uh, not get wet. So. Alrighty, so now I'm changing different uh, pipes here. So the water is running. I flushed out the irrigation line there. And we laid this down when we first planted these. So I'm gonna come through, measure it out, get my fancy uh, pruners there, cut it. And these adapters are pretty easy to set up here. All you gotta do is straighten out that, and just shove it in there like that. And then you have this fancy screw here. Tighten that nicely. And then as you see here, the emitters are starting to drip there. So, pressure keeps adding on for every single row we're doing here. So, just got to put this one on, let it flush some more, and that's it. So now I'm hauling the other end here. And to flush them out, because the first time I'm ever connecting them, I'm letting them run for about two to three minutes there. Flush out all the mess. And then we uh, usually should have... We have a, we bought a few, but we didn't realize that we needed this many. So we have these adapters here, and this one's off. So the pressure releases on this little contraption here, so all the water is draining out of it. And then whenever there's more than 10 psi, then it plugs up automatically. So the reason we want to put these whenever it gets cold during the fall, and we got to flush out the lines so that we don't have to get our air compressor and blow air on it. It just automatically drains every single time you off the irrigation so we only have five of those couplers uh, i thought we bought enough but i guess we didn't so next time we go up to um, our supplier there we'll pick them up but what i'm doing now i am uh for just temporary stuff i'm kind of doing what you got to do for drip the, the drip tape i'm just gonna roll it up like this and then get some black tape or some scotch tape and squeeze it like that so it could stop leaking there so and then once whenever we get the new adapters there, we'll put those on real quick and then, then be done. So it's another scorching day out here. It's hot, it's warm, but these blackberries need the water. So we're out here irrigating. Alrighty, so it has been a long day. I have one more section here and then I'll be done. So I've been letting each section, which is four or four to five rows, depending how long the rows are originally, about on for about two hours or so, just, just getting it started. And then overnight, I'm going to go ahead and leave you know, leave them on and then wake up and then swap them out about every four hours in to go ahead and get plenty of moisture within the whole entire bed because they're not calling for any more rain for a while and these blackberries really need the water and pretty soon we got to start doing the same thing on our blueberries we just planted. But on the blueberries, we've been getting the, our big 250 gallon tote and the tractor and uh, a pipe just bust. A couple of just came off there, I got to go fix that. Second time doing it, I gotta go and uh, probably get some glue and put it on there. Anyways, we're irrigating the blueberries with that with the tractor and the uh, tote for now until we get our header line dug and put with the PVC. 
Yeah, this is what happens. And that's why you need PVC glue. So come on, I gotta go cut that about a foot above the ground and put it there permanently with some glue and uh, do that. But for now, I'm just kind of setting them in there. And that's the only one that's been giving me problems. So the only reason we put four lines on a section, Val only has a 100 gallon pressure tank and usually you need something a lot bigger to supply more um more lines but with like any kind of drip system you want anything from 12 to 15 psi so you don't need a lot of pressure you just need a big debit of water so if we would have known and if we would have built his water house beforehand would have put a bigger pressure tank but it was already established here before we planted everything so so irrigating four rows at a time seems to be doing the trick and the more pressure you have let's say if you have 15 psi on the on the lines itself then it emits more water per hour compared to if you're running like not eight or nine psi so a little more pressure is better than no pressure so it's uh it's kind of a learning curve you know first time i've ever experienced drip in your irrigation is in the high tunnels and the gotta say one of the first or second times i put it together i just connected straight to the hydrant and the hydrant pushes about 50 to 60 psi and some of my end blew off because there's too much pressure on the end there. So that's why a good pressure regulator is needed. So you can see how much, you know, how many pounds of pressure you have on the line. Because if we uh, bust up all these lines, it's a pain to fix. So we, that's not our goal here. So overall, it's been a warm day. And this heat is really exhausting. I'm not sure if you guys, any of you guys work out in the heat. But it's, it's rough. After a full day being out here, it's... You know, and so far here in Missouri, it's been really humid. I think the humidity has been 200%. <laughs> now I'm just messing around. But it's it's been in, you know, it's really high humidity. And the temperatures have been in the 90s. It's not super, super hot. But just that humidity is just what kills everything. I mean, it kills me, drains me of all my power. So, like I said, one more section here to do. And then I'll be good to go for now until hopefully we get some more rain.